To kick things off, um, Politea, probably one of the most ambitious attempts at a decentralized autonomous organizations to date, um, started with this idea that proposals would be voted by the community and then the actual payments for those proposals uh, would then be made via a trusted human that signs those transactions. So I guess what we learned today is that the plan is to move to a completely decentralized system where not only are proposals voted on the Decred blockchain, but they're also um, uh, paid via this decentralized um, governance system. Is that is that a correct interpretation of this? Yeah, so the way Polite works is Polite is an off-chain system. And, the, and what we do is, is that people make proposals for uh, how they want to allocate resources from the treasury. And then uh, everyone has an opportunity to comment on it. The whole process is cryptographically, you know, it's uh, crypt cryptographically attested to and time stamped. And then um, when it comes time to spend, uh, the way it works is, is that at least for the, the first four years of the project, we've had payments disbursed by a centralized corporate entity. And that process is, you know, it, it, it works. And we've, we've been running with it now in production for, I think, a year and a half with Politea. But we really want to decentralize the custody of the treasury funds. And that's, a, you know, that, that work is nearing completion. Got it. That's very interesting. And so could you talk a little bit more about the actual implementation of that? You mentioned the uh, change in Schnorr signatures. Obviously, there's a lot going on in Bitcoin on Schnorr signatures, um, something very different than what you guys put together for Decred uh, and also a different approach, right? With uh, Musig, you have these partially signed uh, interactive transactions, whereas with threshold signatures, uh, you can basically increment those transactions. And is, is the plan of using um, threshold signatures motivated by this idea that uh, treasury invoices could be paid by the community, by the, the custodians of those keys. Uh, is, is that part of the same proposal? Could you talk a, bit, a little bit more about that? Sure thing. Um, I feel like th those two are, you know, two separate things that, that we're trying to address. So in the case of the treasury, what we're, what we're, what we're concerned about is this idea that every block, 10% of every block goes into a treasury fund. Right now, that's a three of three multi-sig. And then that's controlled by a corporate entity. But the, the plan is to have a bit of what's effectively a special account so that it's a, a certain amount of shared state that needs to be maintained. So instead of it going to this three of three multi-sig, it would go into what effectively is a special account called the treasury. So that when, uh, you know, when blocks are mined, instead of there just being this, uh, you know, uh, a transaction that feeds into a particular address, it would go to a special account. And then that special account can be decremented by merit of the other shared state that we maintain in, you know, in the context of Decred, which is the ticket pool. So then what we've done is we've essentially wired the shared state of our ticket pool up to the shared state of the treasury. And then the votes from the treasury that occur on chain can affect or release funds from our special treasury account. So that's the way that we plan to have the, you know, the, the treasury work. That work is you know, work in progress and we're hoping to push that code out in another couple months. And then in terms of how that relates to Schnorr sign signatures is that I really kind of wished we could have taken the Schnorr signatures and overlaid it nicely with the treasury, but you know, due to the way the shared state had to work, that just wasn't feasible. Um, the, main, the main reason being that you have to accumulate these signatures somewhere. And if you try to accumulate them, like let's say you go, hey, everybody trust me, let me accumulate these signatures. I could lie by omission and go, well, hey, I never received Lucas's signature when in fact I did. Cause you know, let's say you voted the way I, you didn't vote the way I liked. So we had to basically take the treasury and put it on chain. In terms of Schnorr and partially signed transactions, our idea is, is to you know, go the route that Bitcoin's going here, which is that Musig is about uh, N of N multi-sig transactions and you know, making use of Schnorr where you can aggregate them all into a single, you know, into a single signature that looks like a normal signature. You know, our plan is to go that route with Decred and then also support uh, threshold signatures. We're, we're planning on uh, adding that support out of the box as well. So rather than just focusing on the N of N case, we're, we're looking to get the M of N case. Uh, there's some, been some interesting work recently from, uh, from a, uh, what is it, on Frost. And so, you know, if you're the more technical amongst you probably are already aware of that. Yeah, that's fascinating. So the then the there's no specialized user that would then have to uh, accumulate those signatures, right? It would have to be something that 
a proposal is, is approved by the voting schema and that effectively pays whoever wins that bid uh, for that specific proposal. So there, there wouldn't be any sort of power users within this government system or elected officials to then make that transition of, of funds. That's, that's, that's roughly accurate because, right, the Politea process is off chain. And then what can happen is, is that with the Politea process is off chain, then the, you know, the spending part is decentralized. So for example, let's say I wanted to be, you know, an irresponsible person and draw, you know, drain the treasury so I can buy Lamborghinis or something silly like that. I can't do that because I don't have sign off from the stakeholders The stakeholders would see these transactions and go, what, what's going on here? I'm going to vote against that. But one thing that is an important point to, to make here is, is that the payment, the process of creating these payments that draw against the treasury, that would still be a soft human-based process. The reason being is, is that somebody needs to review the work that's being done is, is that, you know, let's say there's a hundred people and they're all doing work. The process of entirely automating their payouts is tricky, right? Because like, let's say, you know, three or four of these hundred people are not doing any of their work or they're, you know, overbilling massively. Someone needs to be there to put a stop to that. But in the grand scheme of things, this is effectively like a government that doesn't really control its own, its own funds. It's like, imagine if, uh, you know, the U.S. public had to sign off on every major draw that the U.S. government made when they were spending out of, uh, you know, out of their accounts. Exactly. So it seems like a, a compromise in between, you know, functionality and still having a committee that that makes those decisions, uh, but also integrating community votes into that. Yeah, that's 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 fascinating. Uh, switching gears here. So, could you talk a little bit more about the motivation of using Coin Shuffle Plus Plus as a path to privacy, um, and why you think the the, the Decred community was so quick at reaching? You mentioned uh, close to a third of uh, supply now being uh, uh, effectively um, coin joined via this mechanism. Could you talk a little bit more about it? Sure thing. Um, so, the way, so the way the process works, right, is, is that um, we were looking for privacy. We looked at a whole bunch of different options. There's ring signatures, there's, uh, you know, bulletproofs, there's, um, you know, there's Xiaomi and coin join. There's a whole bunch of different approaches you can take to privacy. The, the real reason we went with Coin Shuffle Plus Plus is because it does not break pruning. So if, let's say decades in the future, someone goes, hey, I want to download the Decred blockchain. They are not obligated to go backwards and download, you know, the entire chain. And that's one of the things that, you know, while I really like the privacy aspects of, say, ring signatures and ZK Snarks or ZK Starks, the issue is, is that by making these things totally opaque, you never know when, when, a, uh, when a transaction output is fully spent. So you can never actually prune it. And that was really the motivation for, you know, for us to use Coin Shuffle Plus Plus. The other thing that I really liked about it was that it was put together using very simple primitives. So it's, you know, it's got a PKI system, and then you know, there's some hashes, there's some secret key, secret key encryption. And then by combining all of, these, all of these sort of completely standard elements in a novel way, we are able to achieve you know, privacy that, you know, hey, even surprised me after I read the paper, I was like, wow, hold on, you only had like these three or four parts and you were able to make something that really, you know, that really tied everything together. So that's, that's what I really liked about it. You know, and, and, in, and in contrast, say Ring Signatures and, and ZK Starks are massively more complex than this. So that's what, that's what really drew me to it. And then the reason we were able to get such adoption is because um, what we did is we overlaid it with our staking system. Our staking system requires people to constantly be, uh, you know, uh, have tickets, the tickets vote, they unlock the funds, the funds get relocked in new tickets, and that process continues. And so in order to, uh, you know, to, to maximize our utility, we overlaid that with the staking system, which is how we got, you know, such, such huge uptake in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of our total circulating supply with this process. Yeah, that's fascinating. And the fact that it, it didn't require any consensus changes might, must have also Take, be taken into account into, into that decision process, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, everybody loves an ambush, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, in terms of, of, of privacy and, and coin shuffle, is the idea that at a certain point when the network reaches a certain um, uh, number of, 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 of transactions or UTXOs that have gone through this process where this idea of the anonymity set uh, is, is high enough relative to the circulating supply. Um, do you think that will be something that is enough for privacy advocates to, to, to get behind at this point? Uh, there's been 
you know, criticisms about CoinJoin as a, kind of a siloed solution. Um, and have you guys thought about funding any sort of um, uh, uh, security research work around breaking uh, CoinShuffle Plus Plus because it's also very nascent, even in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been it's been implemented on Decred and and is is gaining popularity uh, uh, after that. Is that part of the plan? Have there been any proposals that you are aware of on that front? Well, I mean, from, you know, from my perspective, I'm, I'm always one to be, you know, I love to break what I make. So it's like, you know, if I can, if I can break it, I can make it better. And, um, you know, from an analysis perspective, we haven't had anybody show up to uh, propose that they uh, create open source tools that, uh, that, that attack or otherwise, uh, you know, sort of analyze uh, the, the, uh, our, our coin shuffle process. But I would be totally open to such a process. You know, it's we're obviously looking for talented people. You know, shower thoughts. Shower thoughts need not apply. Um, and uh, you know, then then in terms of uh, and then what was the first part of your question again? It was um... the first part of the question was: uh, Have you guys seen any any sort of research already uh, proposed within Decred uh, for for research on that front? Uh, which I think you've 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 answered. Um, because since, since this is a very, uh, you know, esoteric um, schema for, for CoinJoin, and given that CoinJoin um, is something that, relative to these other solutions that you've, you've described, uh, Starks, Snarks, even Bulletproofs, uh, it's something that's more simplistic, uh, yeah. is the idea, if you're pursuing privacy, that if you have an anonymity set relative to the total network, so the, the, the percentage of UTXOs that have gone through this process of anonymity becomes large enough, do you think uh, that coin shuffle in itself is, is, a, is a sufficiently robust privacy solution? Uh, and then you, you wouldn't have to go into this more, these more complex uh, uh, privacy technologies that entail more onerous consensus changes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That was the part that I had forgotten. Is is that for me? Um, I understand. You know, I'm a I'm I'm a tech geek. I love technology. I love encryption, and privacy. These things really entertain me and and hold my attention. But for me, uh, the quality of privacy really depends on things like auditability and simplicity. So the the simpler you can get techno, you know, in terms of the the technology being used to create that privacy, the more of a draw it is for me because it's like I feel like the best and most powerful technology out there is often not the most complex or even close to the most complex. It's often quite simple, you know, shockingly simple. I mean, that was the thing that would, that occurred to me when I read the, the first coin shuffle paper and then also it's follow on coin shuffle plus plus was how, was how incredibly simple each of the pieces was. And then I was like, wow, you, all you do is you plug these simple pieces together in a certain way to do a multi-party computation. And it gives you really strong anonymity, even, you know, even, you know, even to the point that, uh, knowing the network path of the participants is insufficient to really break the privacy. So people who can, you know, de-anonymize Tor can't exactly snap their fingers and go, oh, aha, I know this was Jake, or I know this was, you know, Lucas. And, and you know, and then from a, from a longer term perspective, I view this as um, privacy is one of these things where, where I think it's all about threat models and whether it's good, good enough or not. I think it's a great start. And then, you know, because Decred can modify its own consensus rules, we can go, oh, hey, we missed something or, oh, there's this way to improve this. All we got to do is make a little consensus change or some change to our network. We can make those changes as we go. So we, you know, I, I tried to make it so we tweaked it. We got it pretty close and then go, okay, well, now we can make further adjustments as we go. Yeah, that's fascinating. And there, there's definitely something that you, you said that that's, that's, that's certainly true. There's that trade-off between auditability and privacy, right? Uh, whereas if you can reach privacy and, and retain auditability of the entire chain, not, not of one single entity, but guaranteeing that uh, the supply is not inflated, for example, uh, is, is something that should be considered when, when thinking about privacy systems. So last question for you, Jake. Um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the Lightning Network uh, and your approaches with DEXs. Are these initiatives uh, predicated on this desire to increase interoperability between Decred and other networks uh, or are these projects that you see as being siloed to, to, to Decred and, and siloed to the concept of tipping uh, and, um, and, and trading assets within the Decred platform? Could you talk a little bit more about uh, uh, the motivation behind these, these initiatives, specifically the DEX, 
of in, for the sake of sure. time. Sure, I'll, I'll try to keep it super brief. So, so the so the motivation in these cases is really to, it's all about interoperability with these things. Is that the Lightning Network provides us the access to a whole bunch of use cases that you wouldn't otherwise be able to handle on chain. I mean, no matter how short a block time is, if you go pay for something in person, uh, you need it to settle effectively right away, or else you're just standing there waiting for your transaction to settle. And that that use case is handled very nicely by a Lightning Network. And I don't think a lot of people think about it like that. People think, oh, it's all about saving things and keeping things off chain. That's part of it. But the other part is, is that you know you just will never get a credit card like experience using using on chain transactions that's reliable. You know, like let's say there's some peak load, and then oh, I got to wait 30 minutes for my transaction to clear. Now you got to sit at the restaurant for 30 minutes. That's obviously junk. And so so there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with Lightning Network that you can't do with on chain transactions. And then the the, the other component with the DEX is that I feel like interoperability matters, but how you do your interoperability also matters. So that you know you could just wave your hands and go, oh, we'll just use centralized exchanges all day. But then you're, what you what you've done is you've taken your price discovery process and you've pushed it to centralized corporate entities that you know have you know incentives that don't align with yours. I think might be the best way to put it. So that's the idea is to try to is to, is to try to do interoperability r the right way. And you know you can you can make compromises all over and do what you, you know do what you can. But uh, you know we choose to we choose to uh, try to do it the right way the first time. Great, sounds great. Uh, seems like there are a lot of interesting things in the in the in the, in the background there. Um, thank you so much, Jake, for answering my questions, and thank you for the presentation and the updates. Thanks so much for having me on. Decred is secure, adaptable, sustainable. Learn more at decred.org.